Welcome back to the Collector Chronicles YouTube channel. We've got some buttons here again. Surprise, surprise. These are all probably from the 20s and earlier. Uh, I got these together in one group. They're kind of like a time capsule of uh, buttons that people would have accumulated from for probably over the course of 100 years. Um, they're, I guess, civilian buttons. Ladies, men's, uh, they, they pretty much... Uh, include just about every kind of civilian button that you would encounter, uh, for the most part, the common ones, uh, as a button collector. So, we'll just dive right into them here. We got different materials represented. We got glass, we got shell, mother of pearl, uh, hard rubber, metal. Uh, we'll go, we'll start with the metal ones since there's most of those. So, these are like work clothing are men's trouser buttons. Uh, there's different kinds, some are plain. They're usually like a multi-piece, so we're gonna roll one away here, like a multi-piece stamped construction. Uh, some of them are shiny, some of them are japanned as they call it, uh, which is like a blackening to keep it from rusting. Um, if you're a metal detectorist, these are probably gonna be pretty much uh, toast if they're on the ground unless you got really good soil conditions. Um, a lot of them are like a front and a back and sometimes there's like paper sandwiched in between them or cardboard to keep it when they stamp it to have some kind of uh, something in there to keep it like uh, from collapsing in when they when they stamp the the get it like a substance in there like a like something to sandwich in. Some of them the the back or whatever side that would be. I guess it would be the, the back. Yeah, so this would be facing the cloth, that right there. And then the metal part with the with the logo would be facing out. Rummel, Rummel, oh, Rummel, uh, Himes and Company. Uh, some of them are like uh, one piece steel and they're blued, kind of like uh, gun bluing and they're rusty. These are like from like 1900, 1901, 1902, that time period. A lot of them are made in Germany. These right here are actually Civil War, U.S. Army, and Indian Wars, which is 1870s, U.S. Army trouser buttons. So if you ever find like pictures or you see World War or uh, Civil War, U.S. Army trousers or like a sky blue color, Look at the buttons. They're these kind of buttons. Um, there's like the ones with the pattern like that. And then there's ones that are, let's see. What was one? Yeah, here we go. There's a plain one. Some of them are wood. Some of them are cardstock. And then they'll have like a black and like shellac over them. And then over time that wears out. I guess if they get wet from being laundered. That'll start to expose to like that's probably cardstock that would have like a like a black coating on it. So you run into these a lot if you buy groups like this, and the reason would be um, pretty much dang near everybody was probably in the Civil War uh, or like half of the military age men. Uh, and then when you got out of the war, you kept those trousers because they were good trousers, and then you'd. Uh, your wife or whoever would, uh, or your, you yourself would uh, keep them mended and keep wearing them until they literally fell apart, which is why they're probably pretty rare. So here's another one of those 1900 period. A lot of times these have all kinds of geometric designs on them. Okay, so some of the metal trouser buttons, this might be like a shirt button. Brass, uh, you find these on like Civil War sites too. Some of them will have like a like a maker name. Okay, beyond the okay, here's another metal one. These right here. See, it's plain. It's got like a like a reeded edge. This is like a cuff or vest button. It's got a like a mark on the back. I can't really make it out. This is like 1812, 1820s, 1830s, like probably no later than 1830s. Uh, men, this was like what you call the golden, gilded age or whatever of uh, uh, men's buttons. Uh, they were replaced by like cloth covered buttons when the style changed. 
So that's definitely an old, old button. So that's probably one of the earlier ones in here. And to give you an idea of other kinds like that, sorry, there's kids outside playing. From my personal collection, here's a whole bunch of them. And they'll have like, like that one says rich orange. They'll have all different kinds of uh, yeah, rich treble, London. Uh, they'll have all kinds of maker marks on the back that are like a testament to their quality. So a lot of times you would buy a set of buttons and then have your clothes, your your jacket or coat made or Scoville, the famous Scoville. And then you'd get a set of buttons and they'd be like in a display box. And then you'd have them, you'd pick out your buttons and have them sewn on. Some are, usually they're playing, a lot of times they have like floral designs on them. Okay, so on to the mother, well, here's some bone ones. Like cow bone, as they say sometimes. Um, there's another bone one. A lot of the bone and mother of pearl buttons were made uh, up until like the 20s or 30s. And when they came out with different kinds of plastic, they didn't really have the uh, the bone anymore. There's another bone one. That's probably like Civil War era. The style with the bone buttons changed. Um, usually like the two, like the four hole ones are earlier. The two hole ones are kind of later, I would think. Uh, but, but... There is one in here. This one here. That's a five hole bone button. And those are very early. Those are like 1820s, 1812, 1790s period. Uh, in like archaeological reports, they'll show these found. There was only one of these in here. If you ever see these in a group of buttons, that's kind of like Pay attention, because there might be some other really good stuff in there. So, yeah, five hole. I think this had to do with, like, it was a centering. Um, it was a how they made the button with, like, the drill or whatever tool. It was like a centering hole. And uh, so, anyway, early button. That's a good one. Okay, so, Mother of Pearl. That was a good one. They had, uh, they would get... Uh, mussel shells out of the rivers like the Mississippi River and uh, apparently there was tons of mussels at one point mussel shells and they pretty much almost like harvested them to extinction for the button trade and other stuff and they would actually look for pearls in them too so I think uh, where does that look at there we go yeah the button industry it's a British book um, from probably oh, where is it? right here. If I can't find it right away, I won't worry about it. But yeah, there's some kind of like, yeah, a, there's a machine for making pearl. They call it pearl. That's mother of pearl. Um, Well, there's vegetable ivory. There's women making them in the factory. I thought there was something in here showing, like, harvesting of the mother of pearl. Huh. Might have been something else. Yeah, there's some buttons right there. Yeah, there's, like, a, a display of all different kinds. Like, you see, you get them in sets like that. And, uh, okay, so, yeah. Those go back to the early 1800s, probably 1700s. Okay, so they would dye them, the mother of pearl. There's a blue one. Uh, what kind of the mother of pearl we got in here? There's a little one. I personally think that when you have the holes together in the middle in a small area, those are like 1850s. Those are really old. I know because I was digging in a dump that had stuff from that time period, and I found those. Okay, and with the Mother of Pearl, I'll we'll run that subject, see, with the Mother of Pearl. Sometimes they're pretty dirty, and you can, with a really soft toothbrush and, like, detergent maybe, really gently clean them. Um, I've taken a light coating of olive oil and put olive oil on them, and then kind of, like, you know, buff the olive oil off. Because um, sometimes Mother of Pearl will get, like, powdery and flaky, 
deteriorate. Um, okay, so I won't spend too much time on that, but I do got some other pearl. These are from my personal collection I've saved over the years. I don't really collect civilian buttons, but I've got some really, from some really nice ones. So, uh, here's my birds. I dug up one like this before, and after I dug it up, it started to uh, to disintegrate. It started to flake, like in slivers, and it fell apart, which was kind of heartbreaking. See, they got like a brass shank put in there. It's like a vest, like ball button. There's a, a red one, and there's a blue one like that. I got a red, white, and blue. So yeah, they did have like ball-shaped shell ones too. Okay, was, uh... All right, on to glass. Most of there's like milk glass, clear glass, colored glass, and black glass. So a lot of the uh, milk glass, usually they're plain, but sometimes they have designs like this. Some of them have these rings of uh, paint. And I watched a lady on YouTube give a presentation. I wish I'd remember her name, otherwise I'd give her credit. But she uh, made the point that a lot of times these were popular with pioneer women because they would have uh, like simple clothing or like homemade blouses that were just white. And if they had these buttons just with that band on there, it had enough color to where it looked you know, more pretty or whatever. Uh, that, that paint does hold up pretty good. When you dig these up, it's usually still got that color on there. So, number of those. Yeah, pretty much all, all kinds of colors. There's brown, blue, there's another pattern one. Those are those were used in the Civil War. Let's go back to the Civil War. Um, colored ones. Or here's a... It might be like a blouse or a, or a shoe button. Kind of like a conical shape. Some of these are just itty bitty black glass. Um, well, that one. I don't know if those were for uh, gloves. If you've ever seen women's gloves from like the uh, Victorian era, they're usually very, very, very intricate and very small too. Uh, people were really little back then, very petite. Um, you know, if you see like a really fancy glove, it looks like it's for a little girl, but it's probably for a woman. Um, okay, but some of these are really tiny. I don't know if they were for, uh, there's an actual bead. That's cool. Uh, that's what I like about these groupings like this. There's other stuff like this that's in there that, um, like these are furniture screws, maybe even for a firearm, gun stock, um, other kind of stuff just thrown in here. Uh, okay, so this one right here, they call these charm string buttons. Uh, girls would save uh, buttons, kind of like as mementos, and they would have them on like a string. And uh, it was a popular thing for women to do. Young women would accumulate these, and it was, uh, you know, if they hung out with somebody and they gave them a button, it was kind of like a souvenir of that friendship or that interaction or those travels. Here's another good black glass one. So these books here, okay. National Button Society, I'm not a member. I haven't got around to joining. I'd like to though. Um, it's an old established group. These are pretty old books. Uh, the National Button Society probably has, from what I remember, like actual, that's probably that one right there, that charm string one. They have classifications um, to identify buttons like their own terminology and everything else so it's an established hobby uh in the united states and i would assume elsewhere so yeah here's all the colored ones they, they classify them by shape or construction there's quite a variety of black glass buttons like some of them uh and these date from uh 19th century um like i said in another video in the mid 1800s later 1800s everything they had this uh black theme where stuff was black that was uh, like uh, around the time of like gothic kind of like architecture and stuff um and uh 
they'd have like mourning bracelets and they used hair from like people as like mourning jewelry and um so they would have glass and then they'd have gutta percha which is like an early form of plastic uh they had hard rubber uh that's when um amasa goodyear of goodyear tire fame he patented vulcanized rubber and they use it on all kinds of stuff because um, it was like the new cool thing. So buttons was one of them. They call these like bullseye buttons. Uh, on these Goodyear buttons is usually the name Goodyear and then like a patent date. Usually like 1851 I think it was. So yeah, Goodyear, 1851. Uh, some of them are pretty collectible. They have like Lady Liberty's head on them. Uh, here's another black glass. You see a lot of these with the, ins uh, with the, uh, inscribed design and then like a gold fill. This one, they might've had some kind of machine where they cut, you know, back and forth and then they could churn out a bunch at once. A lot of them had these like integrally cast shanks. There's like a, that might even be for a, uh, Civil War, uh, cartridge box, cartridge pouch finial. Uh, for your ammunition, you have like a flap and you button it over like that. A couple of these are like carnival glass. Uh, these are really cool and it's, I'm really sad that they are broken. A lot of times they have these edges like this that are very delicate. And a lot of times you get them and those are busted right there. They're like a scarab beetle or kind of like a, like a Japanese beetle, which are like iridescent in real life. Um, here's a... 1840s 1850s like for a vest or for a cuff i used to have an 1830s men's coat and it had buttons like this on the cuff so uh these are like tin back so if you ever dig these up with, with a metal detector there ain't going to be much left as far as the back the loop and the front will be intact but that's about it um uh, let's see here yeah there's a kind of like iridescent like a hunting dog our dog looks like a bird taking flight. See, that one's chipped right there. I still like them, even if they're, you know, I'm sure as a collector, they would grade it and knock it down and say it's, you know, whatever. Here's a pretty big black glass one. That one's nice. See, like, it's all the, like, cracks because of how they uh, cast it. Probably some kind of manufacturing defect. Here's another nice glass one. Ooh, let's see. Here's like a, uh, it kind of looks like a work clothing button right there with the tin back and it might be the garment company. They call that a monogram where all the uh, initials are intertwined like that. Sometimes those are kind of hard to figure out what they mean. See, here's one flat good year sometimes they'll say like um yeah, good year national nr national rubber company or no novelty rubber company i think good year there's a suspender buckle or it might be for like a garter or like stockings velvet grip patent 12 13 92 and 1231.95, so late 1800s. Here's a whole string of little glass buttons. Uh, let's see, this one here. Duchess Poughkeepsie. I think Poughkeepsie, is that in New York? Here's a uh, US Navy dungarees buttons. They're like uh, composite or celluloid. Sometimes these are metal, blackened. Uh, turn of the century, maybe into the 20s. Mm. So yeah, we could be here all day. Here we go. Civil War. Maybe Indian Wars. With the tin back. Um, another. Civil War, Indian Wars. U Union, the North. Federal. General service. Here's a uh, one of those. There you go. Yeah, the U.S. Army trouser buttons, which I mean they could have been some kind of civilian. But you look at 
actual photos of original trousers and they got these buttons on there. See how when the uh, when the card stock is popped out of there? Some of these, this side is brass, like this. I think these are 1890s, like Spanish-American War, where they had the brass on the front like that. Okay. Yeah, some of them, like that one, that one's in really good shape. Oh, it's got like kind of like extra decoration on there. Okay, so, uh, okay, there's some of these. Oh, okay, these right here. These are like, that, these are like gentlemen's collar buttons, like for the celluloid collar. I think that's, that's what those are. You run into these a lot. Milk glass, like steel, sometimes pewter. There's probably some kind of vegetable ivory. Like I said, those crack a lot. There's a number of these that have like two sizes. They have like a um, looks kind of like wood, but I think it's glass. They have a tin tin back. This one has a brass back. Here's another one with a glass insert. Nice and dirty. I like it when they're all dirty and grimy. It's like a time capsule. A lot of times with that tin back, you can be pretty pretty rest assured it's a, it's a good old button, not not modern. Uh, okay, so here's some spherical buttons. So here's I just want to show one thing before I wrap it up here. So here's another of those button books. I got a whole group of them on eBay for not that much money. People need to buy books if you want to collect anything. Do not depend on the internet at all the internet should be like a starting point or to fill in gaps but you need books and they're for what they cost it's really worth it um see here's i got into this stuff before the internet the, if i would have had the internet back when i started it would have maybe saved me a lot of time but it might have made me less uh diligent or disciplined when it comes to researching so page six right here this one interesting it's like faceted and it has a green thing there now on the front it's green and I kind of thought maybe because brass turns green that it somehow stained it whatever the result it, it looks kind of cool but I think that that was intentional I think they actually put some like a little dab of color in there because there's some blue uh, these right here. Where did I got that one? I thought I got one of them. Yeah. See, we're not we're not rehearsed here. We're live. <laughs> so those right there with the swirl back. There's from my personal collection. I got a picture of this one on my Instagram. If you're on Instagram, uh, go in my my link on my banner and follow me. I'll follow you, I'll follow everybody back usually who follows me. So yeah, I always thought this one reminded me of uh, Christmas candy with the ribbons of color. That's eighteen hundred. So there's my button grouping. Hope you liked it. Maybe learned something. Uh, there'll be more button videos. I'm just kind of doing some housekeeping and getting some of these videos out of the way. Uh, there's a little teeny tiny brass button. It might have been for dolls or something too. Probably for dolls or gloves. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good one.